Hello, hi, I'm Patricia McNeely. I'm in a Lumens Blu-ray Twin Flame from Chicago, Illinois. I hope you're doing well. This has been very intense energy again, and sorry to say, but it's, it's not going to really let up. But what I do want to tell you is there are ways to get through things. And I want to give you some of the reasons for why is this energy the way it is. I, may I remind everyone, we are in, uh, we're in an energy that is sort of like a lurch, like a, like a push. Okay, what does that mean though? Well, how it translates usually to your physical body is it will make you dizzy, addled. You'll feel ditzy. You might feel um, dizzy, and it can affect several parts of you. And some of you might say. Well, um, what does that have to do with, you know, my twin flame and I? It has to do with your past lives. It has to do with the past and even the past in this current life that you're in. It has to do with parts of you that need to connect only to each other and not to other people, not to a group. It has to do with the parts of you that reason and that have sense and sensibility. Because let's face it. Not everyone will feel very sensible on this journey. You might feel a little kooky, but you're not crazy. You're not crazy, which means that you're not making some of this stuff up, no matter what the people around you think with their head. Not everyone is going through the experience. I know that there's sometimes a sense that maybe you're being singled out, but in many ways, you are getting an advance ascension here further than a lot of other people but this can be very intense there's a big push for you to learn and the learning curve is exponential that's also what I want to tell you is that learning about your body and the topic of this video is the metaphysical part of you the metaphysical the physical and your twin flame body a lot of people like to keep it separate, but it's all you. And there's parts of you that are trying to connect. And this is where it gets kind of tricky for people because the higher part of you, your twin flame body, is a part of the metaphysical, but it's still connected to your physical body. A lot of people like to make this out to be uh, a personality thing or just simply an emotional thing. You are a multifaceted, multidimensional being. You are a human angelic. So there are two parts to you. And those two parts have to be harmonious together. Not only are there two parts to you, you have two people who have to be harmoniously with each other. Synchronicity does not mean a series of numbers, although those can be great indicators along your journey. They may be meaningless to other people around you if they hold a significance for you. But, you know, there's a time and a place for those things. Right now, a big part of the focus is going to be the body and the body becoming well. Why? Because ramping up your youthfulness is actually what you're capable of. And you might say, what? Now, this is where we have some of the divide between older people and younger people. Younger people might say, well, I'm pretty young. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to have some of the things. You may be very surprised about the things that your body brings up for you to deal with. You may be surprised at finding out what is the difference between it being metaphysical or physical. This has been one of the misconcepts, and so... These parts of you have not been accessible until two, starting in 2018. 2019, the latter half of the year, is going to be really big for getting yourself very deep and unified. How to unify, okay? Your physical side and your metaphysical side are intricately connected, intricately Every single part of you relies on another part. That's not codependency, okay? That is interreliance. 
What about the higher part of you? So we now have one, two, and another side. Your life body matters, okay? The former template that you lived under was a template of individuality. This included the ego. The ego is your personality partner. It's been only one of several subtle bodies that have helped you navigate as a single person, solo, flying solo, being single, being maybe a person who wants to sow their wild oats. I don't know. But whatever that has meant for you, when you start having the activation, what happens? First of all, you needed the love to feel what this really is again. So don't put the kibosh on everything that you've done up until now. No regrets. But now you're here. Now you're here in the now moment. And it's time to pay attention to your body. Because your body is going to need you to be proactive. You need to get your channels open. You need to focus on unification. You need to ditch a lot of the things of the past. You need to be able to gear up your health here. And that only happens when you're able to get higher love in. That doesn't happen by doing this. That doesn't happen by just, you know, um, looking at something. It happens by actively engaging the metaphysical side of you. You have to be able to do that. Now, not a lot of people actually know how to do it. That is why I'm here to teach it. So even if you have, quote, taken classes or um, I'm talking about other kinds of classes, classes that might have taught you certain things, okay, those are not water under the bridge. And yet it's a bit like saying, okay, that was the first act. Now you're in time for your really great performance here. And no, sacred sexuality is not a performance, no matter what people might try to think. It's very private. It is a private thing between the two lovers. So what does this mean, the metaphysical side? Okay. The metaphysical side is where you have two people and they become enveloped. Okay. Now, what if they're apart? How do they continue that? How does she continue to feel him when he's not there? So this is sometimes part of the reason for separation. So that you can learn this and do it even when the physical presence is not there. Now, even that is a process because as you come together, you'll yank away things, you'll bust things up, and if it's not uh, something that you're keeping, it will need to come up and out for full removal, okay? This is the difference when people say to you, let it go, just let it go. And you just say, I can't, or they're telling you, let that person go. And you're just saying, but I can't, but I can't. Why? There is a metaphysical connection. Now, what I say is, if it is not your twin flame, your metaphysical connection is how I teach you how to get out anything that doesn't belong there. Anything. Which is why I do these sessions. My Psyche Body session is a very good one for that. To help with phobias, traumas, abuse. And yes, this will include forms of sexual abuse. That's a big one that comes up for people. Wouldn't you rather have it gone and be fresh and new and have your body not be tainted by the past? Of course you would. Wouldn't you like to be able to cut the time at least in half for what it traditionally has taken to get rid of something like these phobias? There's people that manage to live with phobias, but managing something and fully removing it is what you're here for. It's like when people manage any illness or disease, dis-ease in the body. What happens? Yeah, you can get a form of managing. We've all been managing and coping and managing and coping, okay? What if you are suffering the ill effects of a person who has been very negative to you? Okay, maybe they don't, you know, get out the belt and beat you bloody, but they do other things, needly things. 
pick on you things. There's never any respite. They are continually always keeping you off balance. Okay, you're hyper vigilant. You can't rest. You can't do anything. What do you think the toll takes on your physical body? So as these things travel from the metaphysical, where you've brought them in from every place you've ever been, to the physical body, this is when it shows up as illness and disease. And sometimes both. Sometimes illness and disease in the body can actually affect you and block you from connecting metaphysically and block your twin flame body from feeling each other. So your light body matters. You now have the template of relationship from 5D. What does that mean? That means that you're going to have much more assistance to regulate and manage and maintain. Because that is the next thing that you need to know. How would you maintain and not lose ground and keep moving forward? How does your body help you navigate all these intense energies where you're going to inherently know what to do? I am a firm believer in empowering you so that gradually you graduate from me. You graduate from readings. You graduate from running to the internet every time there's a bump in the road. Every time you feel something or something isn't going well, what does that mean? Okay, because this is where it's going to be odd. It's going to be a mishmash of stuff all over the place. Not everybody is getting rid of or having the same things come up. Men have different things than women come up. Women will need to address their bodies in several areas, specifically because women have either given birth or have the capability of giving birth. I covered a lot of that in my last class called Advanced Ascension Symptoms, Advanced Twin Flame Ascension Symptoms, because now you're starting on your Twin Flame Ascension. It's leveling up. In fact, it started leveling up over a year ago, but not everyone felt it. Not everyone was in that energetic space for it. But now a lot of you are. A lot of you are. So I'm here to help with that. I'm here to empower you and give you some go-to things, which I do include with every one of my sessions. Now, what's the difference between my two sessions? Okay. The psyche body one, this is one of your subtle bodies where um, this is where some really deep stuff has lingered or been felt or has lingered as a trauma or block. Things that people call blocks. What's blocking you? What blocks you from feeling love? Have you ever felt what love is really supposed to feel like? Maybe, maybe not. I would venture to say there's a majority of people who have forgotten what love is really supposed to feel like, that is supposed to be belonging to you, and instead you've been put on someone else's emotional roller coaster, and they want you to ride it with them, and you're saying, what are you doing to me? You're at someone's beck and call, except you don't want to be. Okay, so... What has happened in the past to stunt that for you? Is it a trauma? Is it some abuse? Is it somewhere where someone has dimmed your light? Because I do feel those things with people. Someone's dimmed your light. Somebody's done something to you. Finally, something happened that was the straw that broke the camel's back. And that's why you're here. You're here to have your absolutely brand new twin flame body without any of the taint, any of the, the poison from the past, any of the things, the button pushing, okay? And I even see that too when people talk about narcissists. They're like, hey, 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 how can I get that narcissist back? Or how can I get rid of them? Or how do I turn the tables on them? Don't even bother. Remove them. That is what I'm saying. I am well aware that people grow up uh, in situations where they may have no measure of control over what they are subjected to. I'm well aware of that. And those carry over into adulthood. And for adults, you're able to take actions. You're able to take proper healthy actions, which is to reach out for the proper help you need. So to give you an idea 
with this, um, if you were to have this, okay, if you were to compare this to other forms of what you could call therapy, okay, many times that gets you to a point. I'm not criticizing it. It gets you to a point. We're here to help finish the job because whatever we do to clear things, we, Twin Flames, can then bring in the light and the love to lighten this whole place up. That's really one of the keys, okay? It's not pointing out all the negativity and being a firebrand. It's saying, where am I bringing the light and the love to? Where are me and my twin flame traveling to or venturing to? Or even, are you able to know how to have brand new health and well-being? That might be a foreign concept to you. Okay, I was just talking with someone earlier today because this occurred to me a few years ago when I said, but what is the difference between when, you know, we're young and when we get older? Okay, first of all, a lot of people stop playing. Okay, we can't play the same way. But something happens to our bodies. Okay, our bodies kind of stiffen up. We get older. That's natural. But some people don't even recall what it was like to feel like when they were a child. What was it like to feel giddy over a new love? When you first felt the love, okay, did you run right out and decide to go into your head? Or did you feel, okay, what happened to you that you lost some of that loving feeling? Did everything send you up into your head? Did this make you feel like you were crazy? Because I'll tell you something about that. Lose your mind. That means lose all the things that will wind up being completely irrelevant to you and your true love. I know this because if you observe people and you observe people and you have the privilege of seeing people that are in love, and that's my privilege on a daily basis, I say thank you to everyone who has, who I've had the pleasure to get to know. And when you see it, it's palpable. It's tangible. You can feel it. It lightens the place up. Tell me you don't know the difference between walking into a room and saying, oh, this room has a vibe or, oh, wow, this is a nice place. You know, I, I don't know what it is. Is it the decor? It's usually the love that is there. It's been put there by someone. It's been planted there. What else? Once I was at an amusement park, one of the big ones here, and we're waiting in line to get on one of the rides. And there was this young couple in front and they were just so silly in love. Okay. They were youngish, but they weren't really young. They weren't 14 years old. They appeared to be sort of 19, 20 years old. And they were just having the nicest time touching each other. And she was saying, I like when you touch me. And he goes, I like touching you. And she says, I don't like it when you're not by me. And he goes, I'll stay by you. And it was a silly conversation, but they were completely enveloped in just where they were in love. Okay. A lot of us have forgotten that in love, where it doesn't really matter. They weren't saying, you know, what's your sign? Uh, I think you're a master number. Uh, they weren't saying any of that. They were simply enjoying the pleasure of each other's presence. And sometimes it's that simple, where you are just basking in the presence of the person you love. Now, if like this couple, you are in separation, Okay, they see each other due to circumstances. They've had to be apart somehow. How do you then feel yourself? Do you pine away? Do you grieve? Because if you have in past lives, of course, that will come up for you. Anger, grief, unresolved things, lives cut short, unrequited. How do we have the realization of this? How do you wind up bringing the parts of you to connect all of this? Your light body matters. Your togetherness matters. 
putting yourselves together matters, maintaining that togetherness, maintaining it a year from now, maintaining it five years from now, maintaining it into eternity, okay? You have an eternal love. You may have forgotten the feel, but you'll remember. It's how you felt this to begin with, what sent you running to do your research, what sent you to look and ask and seek. It's the thing that also the sentience of who you are doesn't want any of the garbage of the past, but how to get it out and back into your purity where the love that you feel is really the love that is you, that you exude, that you're basking in, and that keeps you together more than the strongest glue ever. Children aren't glue. That's been proven time and time again. People love their children, but they cannot hold a relationship together or make it more passionate. Only love can do that. Healing from an illness starts with a person's desire to be new and to love themselves. That's where it starts. I want to live. Good. This is the same desire that people have when they have anxiety or panic or phobias or traumas. Any of the things that I'm saying here where they say, I don't want it anymore. I want to live. I want to know what it's like to feel alive and be in love. I want that thing that belongs to me. It belongs to us. Yes, it most certainly does. And you are the purveyor of it as well. Not only is it you, it's quite literally where you're from. Now, that in itself is an experience. And I will say that. It don't sound like a catchphrase until you actually experience yourself. The sessions I have for people enable you to create activations that are strongly important and are vital. You have vital parts of you. Vital parts that are going to keep you alive, particularly over the next several months while you put yourself together. And it's important to find out. What else? Well, there's a misconcept that, you know, a lot, well, I guess a lot of people would like to linger in their intimate moments. But you don't always do that, which is why people feel this drive of a mission. What is the mission? Okay, rather than mission, I like to call it the calling of the heart. How would you create this? How would you create the way that your love wants to express itself in the world. With love, how do you uncover and disentangle yourself sufficiently to get it up and running? Causal body session. Create. Release your past lives. Ease the stress that your body feels. Are you feeling closed in? Are you feeling a constriction here? Are you feeling it in your rib cage, like someone put a belt around you and tightened it? Yeah. That's the kind of stress and tension that you won't even know where it comes from. But I do, and I can tell you, the majority of it is from the past. Some of it might be now. And during the session, we make recommendations. I receive guidance on recommendations. And also, we cover quite a bit of ground in that, and I get it shifted. So when I talk about Get your energies moving. That's the simplest way I can say, get this stuff out, get it moving, get you back on the road, okay? I am the one-stop body shop to get you back on track and get you on the road with your eternal body. And yes, it will usually take several sessions, which is, um, however, enabling you to cut to the chase. Wouldn't you like to have a way to make some of this very concise, specific, and for not only you as an individual, but you and your true love, okay? Wouldn't you like that? Oh, look at how they're looking at each other. Okay. So what else is going to happen? All right. 
So how capable would you say you are going to be when everyone around you starts going through some ascension stuff? Okay. And by the way, that is a good reminder. This energy is going to carry miscommunications, cut people some slack. It's going to be missed communications, dropped phone calls, forgotten invitations. Um, people get the hour wrong. It is going to be people going a little bit crazy because we are in this energy this month of declaring your independence. Okay. About 33 countries have Independence Day celebrations this month alone. And I did a video on it a couple of years ago. But the point of that is, is people are busting out. When they do that, they get a little crazy. And they're not intending to cut people slack. Watch where you're walking. Watch where you're driving. Watch your own balance. Those are what I'll say about this energy because it's important that you take care of you, okay? You take care of you. That's how you take care of your twin flame. If you would like to have one of these sessions, look at the links down below. There is a code for you to use and ask your higher self for the means to make it happen. That's how you do it. Don't be in a state of lack or, you know, hesitation, one of the things to know is when to take proper reactions. And you will also get a lot of information out of my book, Twin Flame Ascension and Breath, book two. That link is down below as well. Twin Flame Ascension and Breath. In here I talk about much of the ascension breathing techniques, special ones. You can review it over and over again. There is a glossary. So if this is fairly new to you, welcome. Don't be deterred by some of the things you see out there because you'll see some stuff as it all gets like kind of, you know, people talk about what's happening. I talk about the body, okay? You have a body. You showed up. You incarnated in a body. You have a body. You have an eternal body. And your lover has a body. So you have a body. So this is a body focus that is what I focus on. However, I know quite a bit about emotional connections, relationships. You want to find out how to make your relationships healthy? Have a session because we will talk about that. There doesn't need to be name calling. Their twin flames roll in a much higher way. It doesn't mean confrontation. Not unless you're actually going to confront someone that you see beating an animal or a child or yourself, in which case I still tell you, if you can avoid it and get help. I say that to people, if they have a session and something is too intense, I will say to them, you need to move along with this. What other help is available around you? And we discuss it, okay? Your higher self doesn't want you to mess around with that. That's not what you're here for. You're here to be loved, be in love, be healthy, be well, and be the living example of light and love because you are from those places. Yes, you are. And other people may not know who you are, but you have to know who you are. You. You're a lover. Your love is a love that transcends everything. And you better believe that you're a lot stronger than you may think so come and see me, come and have a session and join. I will have much more, many more classes coming up. I'm going to have some live class, the live class here in Chicago. Watch on my website, twinflamesmerge.com. Or if you are not sure what to have, twinflamesmerge at gmail.com. I do try to work with people, um, which is why I have the webinar online classes that I do. And there's going to be things that you'll experience that are very personal for you. So find out how to, what I call, cut to the chase, okay? Move yourself, quantum. Get that quantum movement going. How you do that is engaging your body. That's the way. So thank you so much for watching. 
Have a wonderful day. Bye.